Hi everybody, welcome back to Moscone West. You're watching theCUBE's live coverage of RSAC 2024, the security conference. Uh, we're, in, we're in Moscone West all week. We're deep into to day one. We're super happy to have Nayaki Nayar here. She's the CEO of Securonix. Nayaki, I can't believe it. A year ago, we crashed your party, right, <laughs> at RSA. And boom, here we are, back again. Last year was like April, now it's May. Welcome Hi. back to theCUBE, good to see you. Thank you, David, it's uh, great to be here. Yes, you crashed the party, but we also had a great session last year, if you remember. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> that yeah. That was the first one we had, uh, announcing our Snowflake partnership at that time, so thank you, great to be here, and uh, good to see you too. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. you got my attention. Securonix announces new era of AI reinforced cyber ops to combat AI powered threats. You got my attention. <laughs> you guys are making a big, more than a can cannonball here at the at yeah. the RSA conference. Tell us about this. Yeah, so we have been on a massive innovation journey, uh, David. Last year, we announced a partnership with Snowflake. That was a data lake that we are using under our SIM. Uh, but um, this year, we are reinforcing our entire platform, the entire Securonix platform with AI capabilities. I mean, that's a big part of the release and the launch. And, uh, and we are branding it under Securonix Eon. In fact, it's, we look at it as a whole new era of cyber operations that we are ushering into. And super excited about all the new stuff that we are launching uh, this year here at uh, RSA. Yeah, so you have like serious product chops. I mean, you, yeah. product matters, you know that. Yeah. You, that's been your, it's in your DNA. So tell us about Eon. Uh, it, my understanding it's a suite of yeah. capabilities. What's in yeah. there? So uh, there are three key pillars of Eon, uh, David, that we are launching. One is um, there are three key AI uh, capabilities. We call it insider threat psycholinguistics. I know it's a tongue twister, it's yeah. a mouthful to say, but it truly really is to detect the malicious intent of insiders, right? Just like, um, uh, employees or insiders that may be a big threat. So detecting the malicious intent using AI, by the way, we are also announcing a partnership with AWS and uh, leveraging their bedrock, so that's the platform we are leveraging for all AI. Uh, and then there's something called adaptive threat modeling, that's another big one, is how do we dynamically help our customers uh, discover new attack chains, right? So that's another one. And the last one is what we call investigate RX, which is, how we are leveraging AI to be able to look at different data sources and help the SOC analyst investigate any uh, incident at a very, very fast pace, right? So those are, I would say, the three key capabilities. But in addition, we also have what we call cybersecurity mesh and frictionless uh, experience. I'll talk about it in a little bit. Yeah. All right, we'll talk some more about that. But so, just when you talk about AI, there's kind of pre uh, chat GPT AI and yeah. then there's generative AI. And you guys have been, everybody's been doing AI for a long time, but, yeah. but can you help us understand where the different types of AI fit? Yeah, of course there's uh, generative AI, precision AI, you have different types of AIs that, that we are leveraging. Um, we are definitely, for the psycholinguistics capabilities that I was mentioning, we do use the, the generative AI yeah. LLM capabilities to be able to detect the malicious intent. Of, uh, of the user. Uh, but similarly, uh, precision AI for us to like, proactively discover any kind of threats uh, that customers may have in their landscape, right? So that's another big one. Uh, and GPT kind of functionality where uh, uh, we call it, where you can ask a question like a policy genie and it'll automatically respond to you, collect all the data and respond to you at your fingertips. So it's really, you know, from a experience perspective, what used to probably take days or weeks to detect a threat and investigate and respond should truly take minutes or seconds. You know, that's the big transformation and evolution that we are bringing to the entire space. And Bedrock obviously yeah. gives you the LLM optionality, which yeah. is, I think, really important. Yeah. Llama 3 comes out, sets new benchmarks. Yeah. You know, we know there's going to be GPT-5 is going to yeah. come out, and not that, not that you can get GPT-5 in Bedrock, we'll see how that all works out, but, yeah. but there's Anthropic and Mistral, and they're yeah. just constantly leapfrogging each other. Yeah, yeah. So how do you think about the LLM ping-ponging, um, yeah. and, and, and how do you sort of determine 
when the, the right fit for the right job? <laughs> Well, I mean, I let the engineers, the data scientists figure out what's the right fit for the right job, but uh, we are definitely, uh, of course, leveraging uh, Anthropic, right? The cloud uh, version three that, that we are leveraging yeah. right mm -hmm. now, and four is coming up, so we'll be moving to that uh, very, very quickly. But, you know, uh, David, what I'm super excited about is uh, the speed. Like the, the speed at which we are now able to provide that. Compressing yeah. that cycle that you yeah, talked about Yeah, this cycle, what yeah. you literally, can you imagine the tedious manual, uh, heavy lift that they had to do before, which was all manual, to automating it, what they used to have, L1, L2, analysts doing all of that stuff manually. Now, we call it AI agents doing all the L1, L2, and even L3 kind of stuff, and having humans do more advanced. Mm. Work, right, well, that, so that's where. Yeah, that, that makes it incredibly right. attractive, though, from a value prop standpoint, because when you can shorten that time to value, you can speed time to ROI, yeah. and so I, yeah. you know I, I don't yeah. have to convince you that this yeah. is a good financial decision three and things. a good security decision. You know, three things we really raise a focus in our models or in everything that we're doing in AI: the speed which we deliver the results, the yeah. precision with which we deliver the results, and the efficacy. So I always tell my team, speed, precision, and efficacy is extremely important yeah. for us to get the outcome and get the true transformation for, for our customers, yeah. You know. Go ahead, please. No, I think that you know this launch is such a big deal because I think it does really kind of cement your legacy. Um, how are you talking with cybersecurity teams about the challenges that they're facing on a yeah. regular basis? Like what, are, what are their priorities in terms of the biggest challenges that they're facing? You know, you put yourself in a CIO's or a CISO shoes, their world is turning upside down, oh, yeah. right? Uh, like I said, we call it attacks powered by AI. Yeah. You know? If we thought it was bad, it's going to get really worse, right? Hack, uh, threat actors are using AI they're not just more malicious and disruptive, but extremely disruptive uh, to an organization. Then you pair that up with, I call it a digital tsunami. Tsunami of cloud, tsunami of data lake, tsunami of devices, tsunami of yeah. IT, OT. I mean, this ever expanding attack surface that they have to now uh, manage. And then you layer that in with um, what we call uh, skill issues, resource issues, budget issues, that they have to face with. But the most critical thing, or the important thing that every CIO, CISO is now facing with, is the regulatory and compliance pressures. Oh yeah. Right? Where, uh, just like a CFO is held accountable for the financial disclosures of a company, now a CISO is held accountable for the security disclosures of the company, right? Yeah. I sit on a couple of boards myself, I'm on the audit committees of those boards too. Uh, and every audit committee uh, company is now required within four business days, uh, if there's any yeah. incident, right, to release that SEC requirements. And then not to mention the quantum uh, puzzle, uh, fast forward two or three years, the entire quantum oh, yeah. era, right? So you look at all of this, all the way from attacks powered by AI to the digital tsunami that they have to now yeah. grapple with, resource and budget issues and regulatory and compliance pressures. There is no winning here. Right? There, there is no so winning. You know, I have it's a, a question. pressure cooker for, for a CI or a CISO. Yeah. I have a question for you. You said you sit on a couple of boards. Yeah. yeah. On the boards on which you sit, is there generally more than one person besides yourself who has security chops and knowledge? No. Because that's a huge industry challenge that, yes. that I'm running yes. across yes. is that, yes. so you're trying to, we're saying, CISOs, you have this responsibility that you have to bear, yeah. but you can't bear it without budget, yeah. and so you have to go get that from the board, yeah. and it's, I think it's a big challenge. It's true, I mean, uh, on both the boards that I'm on, especially on one board, I'm the only person who has the tech and the IT and the security background, right? There's yeah. no one else, right? So, uh, yeah, there is that skills shortage. Another one, there are a couple of us who have that skills and who have that knowledge. Yeah. Uh, but you are spot on. The boards are also struggling because you know, you put yourself in a board shoes. All this sounds extremely geeky, right? All they care about is, can you make sure we are not attacked? But if we are, right, how fast can we recover, right? So it doesn't disrupt the business. I mean, those are the two, <laughs> two big questions right. they have. And 
Yeah, and by so. the way, we still need to make money. Yeah, I mean. And just, you know, keep our shareholders happy, so there's that. Exactly, right, to make sure there's no business disruption and yeah. recover uh, as quickly as possible so yeah. that you don't impact the yeah. bottom a lot line. Of, a lot of the board, too, I mean, CISO will present, maybe even quarterly. A lot of times, I talk to board members and they're like, they present all these stuffs and these acronyms, and I don't, to your point, yeah. Yeah. I just want to know, what are you doing to reduce our risk? Are we safe? Yes. Right? Are we good? Yes, you know, yes. Give us, certify these financials. Certify our cyber resilience. Yes. It's a lot harder to certify cyber resilience than it is financials. Financials right. is like black and white. Right. I mean, it sometimes it gets fuzzy. Right. But it shouldn't while be. there are frameworks, whether it's NIST framework or yeah. Mitra, while there are frameworks to guide and help uh, in these discussions, but it's still a lot of room left for interpretation, right, that the boards don't understand and don't really know have all the answers for. Yeah, right and you need answer. solutions. Yeah. I want to ask you about your differentiation. So speed, yeah. speed, precision, and efficacy. Yes. So you, th these sound like differentiators, but you package those into a solution yeah. that delivers. Yeah. So what are your key differentiators? Because anybody can use Bedrock, yeah. anybody can use the cloud. Yeah. What do you do differently? Yeah, so, you know David, <clears throat> Uh, one is, of course, yeah, we are leveraging AI and we are reinforcing everything, right? But another big component of E.ON is what we call cybersecurity mesh. It's a mesh architecture that we are using. And that mesh architecture enables our customers to be agnostic. So, you know, customers have different data lakes, different clouds, different EDR solutions, right? So we agnostically integrate with any data lake they have, any clouds, or any EDR uh, um, tools they have in their landscape, right? So we don't require them to go rip and replace all their EDRs and rip and replace all the, right? We agnostically integrate, so we go where the data is, right? We run our analytics on wherever their data is, which is a massive differentiator. So unlike all the other vendors mm. where they want to rip and replace the entire thing and say we are the only solution in the market, while we have a solid platform with SIM and SOAR and UEBA and now reinforced with AI, our cybersecurity mesh architecture truly enables our customers to run agnostically, to run on any data lake, any cloud, and also integrate with any of the EDR vendors. Yeah, that is, yeah. so okay. It's a because, massive differentiator. Because you've us. been, yes, you've been in the SIM space forever. Yes. Right. right. That's that's your background, but so, it's this mesh architecture that is really, yeah. It, yeah. you see, uh, on top of the data cloud, yes. or any data cloud, yeah. actually. Interesting. It's what is this autonomous threat sweeper, another sort of really interesting. Yeah, right, so we have, where we can autonomously sweep all the threats and help them identify what is a, prioritize it, right, to be able to help them really focus on what? which is a, the big one, big yeah. risk that they need to focus on and, and address and remediate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's a, a proactive way to, what, re prioritize? Well, like constantly the false positives. Constantly looking yeah. for threats, yeah. I think. Yeah. Detect and uh, prioritize and, and respond to it, yeah. So what's happening here? Have you had any, you probably haven't had much chance to scope out the show. You've been busy uh, no, in I, like I just came in. Yeah. Uh, we were uh, at our uh, offices uh, earlier today, and I just walked in. You are the first one oh, I'm awesome. talking to. Like yeah. I still haven't visited our booth also yet, but I'm really looking forward to uh, the rest of the show here. Yeah, a uh, lot of excitement stuff and uh, good things that uh, I'm looking forward to. I think the exhibit hall is just opening now. Is that where you're headed now? You're going to go yes, yeah. check I'll out your booth action. Check out our booth action. Mm -hmm. All the all the other uh, displays and vendors, and I know there are a lot of announcements that are going to be coming out. We are super pumped, we want to get it out. So, E.ON is a big announcement this uh, yeah. uh, this week, and also our partnership with uh, AWS, those are two big announcements for us, and we are super pumped. We have come a long way in a year, and uh, you know me, David, right? So I do. This is <laughs> When I first heard that you joined Securonics and you were telling me what you're going to do, you said, and then your whole team was like, Oh yeah, she's got us jumping. <laughs> product, get the product right, get yes. the focus there, get yeah. the product into market, yeah. make sure it's got the right product market fit, yeah. iterate where it doesn't. And, and this is not the only release. Every quarter you will see us releasing new capabilities. <laughs> you know this. I'm you know, laughing, <laughs> I know. Drum beat every quarter we have uh, new stuff coming out. So stay tuned, come August, I have next set of capabilities in our AI stack and then by end of this year we'll have next set, right? So we have a lot coming out. We have a launch party tomorrow. 
uh, for what we are releasing here at RSA, but yeah. Awesome. It's awesome. Cool. Okay, I got to run, we got our, you got to <laughs> run. We have our, our event with NYSE, you're going to your booth. Yeah. Shelly, you're going to pick it up from here. Pick it up from and, here. And uh, close out with Dave Linthicum. We're wrapping up day one at RSA 2024. Nayaki, thank you so much for coming back in theCUBE. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Absolutely, thank you David, thank right. you Charlie. Really Fantastic. appreciate it, it was great, thank All you. All right, keep it right there, we're back right after this short break. You're watching theCUBE at RSA 24 from Moscone West. Be right back. <laughs>